Stephen A., is Kerr right? No, he's not. Steve Kerr is completely wrong. Um, <clears throat> and I say that respectfully, because I don't want to come across as somebody that's disrespecting Steve Kerr, because I do respect him. I think he's looking at this all wrong. And I think that he's attaching uh, excessive level of cynicism and vitriol uh, to the word villain itself. Of course, Kevin Durant is a great guy. Of course, he's a great basketball ambassador. Of course, he's a good young man who's a, a tribute and a treasure to the game of basketball. He's one of the top three players in the world. He conducts himself uh, with, with exceptional professionalism, and he's an upstanding citizen. That has nothing to do with you being the villain. What has everything to do with you being the villain is when you've served to upset a lot of people because of the decision that you made. Are you really going to tell the city of Oklahoma City that they, they, they shouldn't view Kevin Durant as a villain? Are you really going to tell Russell Westbrook, assuming he feels that way because we don't specifically know, but are you really going to tell Russell Westbrook he should not view Kevin Durant as a villain when Kevin Durant didn't even give him a phone call before deciding to leave uh, for Golden State? And if Ru what Russell Westbrook says is true, he found out on social media and in the press like everybody else. Didn't we view LeBron James at least, momentary, uh, at least momentarily as villainous because Dan Gilbert found out on national television like everybody else that LeBron was leaving? If it were not for Dan Gilbert writing that immature, belligerent, juvenile letter to LeBron James upon the LeBron James decision to take his talents to South Beach, LeBron James would have been more of a villain and it would have lasted more longer than if Dan Gilbert had not, you know, then if, then if Dan Gilbert had not written the letter. So we understand that. Um, you're looking at Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant decided to up and leave OKC. Kevin Durant decided to leave OKC to go to a Golden State Warriors team that had just beaten him in the conference finals. And one of the things that nobody wants to really, really touch on, we mention it, but we don't really, we haven't taken a, a moment to step back, take a deep breath, Max, and really realize the, to, you know, the, the magnitude of Kevin Durant's decision. He's rendered the entire 2016 upcoming NBA season boring. Boring. I'm literally sitting here. You are talking. Do you, do you know anybody like who loves starting. basketball more than me? No. I mean, this is, this is I, 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 the NBA, basketball, I have to thank for the illustrious career that I've had. I mean, that I, I'm, I'm so incredibly grateful to God. I'm so incredibly grateful to the NBA. I'm so incre incredibly grateful to the athletes that play in the NBA. They've made my life worth living because I've never felt like I had to work because I'm covering basketball, okay? This man in one move has made this the most boring least intriguing season of my NBA professional career covering the game. Or because the most. This, because, or because, the most interesting. Because, because, but but, but let, me, <laughs> let me explain why before I go to you, Max. Literally, let's analyze this. Who can legitimately say that we're not where I've already made, do you understand that I already have my hotel reservations Stop and my it. flight arrangements made for, gold, for Oakland and, um, Cleveland. and for, for Cleveland? Of course. It's done. There's nothing to talk about here. Am I supposed to believe that the LaMarcus Aldridge that I saw in the last four games of that semifinal series against OKC is going to be better and emboldened to go up against somebody this season? I know what Kawhi Leonard could do. I respect LaMarcus Aldridge. I know they've acquired Pau Gasol, even though there's no Tim Duncan there. Manu Ginobili has come back. But am I really supposed to expect San Antonio to beat Golden State? How about the Clippers? I respect the hell out of Blake Griffin. I know he can play. CP3 is my man. Love him. Am I really supposed to believe that if DeAndre Jordan plays in the game, that he's going to shoot better than 50% for the free throw line, and that's going to be enough to offset Golden State? Am I supposed to believe that Mike Conley's $153 million contract is going to enable him to usurp Golden State? I mean, am I supposed to believe that Damian Lillard, who's a stud, and C.J. McCollum with his new max deal is going to be enough to knock off Golden State? Stop it. Of course not. And then in the Eastern Conference, what? Toronto's better because DeMar DeRozan got $139 million? 
million. The Washington Wizards are better because Bill got 128 million. The Knicks are going to be better. But am I really supposed to believe that Derrick Rose and Joe Kim Noah are going to be enough to usurp LeBron James in Cleveland? How about Chicago with D-Wade, Butler, and Rajon Rondo? That's nice, but I'm supposed to believe that a Todd Gibson or a McDermott or somebody is going to derail Cleveland? There's nothing to look forward to here. I have to, I, I, I have June to look forward to because of one decision. And that one decision by Kevin Durant has so flipped the balance of power in my estimation. It has stripped us of intrigue. That is enough to make you, albeit a friendly, innocuous, harmless villain, a villain nonetheless. Steve Kerr is a six-time champion. He knows that, no matter what he says, respectfully. As you say about Steve Kerr, I want to say this respectfully because I don't want to seem like I'm disrespecting Stephen A. Smith on basketball because I respect you. Mm -hmm. But boy, are you wrong about this. Oh, Lord. I mean, Kevin Durant a villain because LeBron... Look, when LeBron James went to Miami, he's a villain. Why? Because he wanted to go play with his best friends on South Beach and win championships. That makes him a villain. Kevin Durant going to Golden State, he's a villain. Why? Because he sees a bunch of unselfish players and wants to play in a system where he doesn't have to worry about who takes the last shot and egos and stuff. He can just fit into a system that makes him a villain. Look, you talk about the fact that it ruined this end, upcoming NBA season. The truth is, we all knew what was going to happen last season. We knew it was Cleveland and Golden State from day one. We could That's pay not true. lip service. That's not true. Who did you think That's was going to be knocking out actually, Cleveland you, or Golden you State? You actually, you actually thought that San Antonio, you were waiting for the matchup between San Antonio and Golden you know, the, State. Wait a minute. They were going to go also, out, though, San Antonio. Also, and you were also waiting for OKC. You were waiting for OKC. OKC was the one. Let's put it this, this way. Is right. You were waiting for that. The Spurs were a cut above every, were a cut above, but you knew they were going to lose to Golden State. I, I grant you. There was at least a wild card in the West. OKC was a wild card. You figure the Warriors to beat them. There's, a wild, there's no wild card right now. As long as everyone's healthy, we already know what the finals are going to be. There are many seasons throughout NBA history like that. That's the nature of basketball. You can pretty easily determine in the beginning of the season the super teams. Sometimes there's only one in each conference. And you know what the finals are going to be ahead of time. Very seldom are, is the apple cart upset in that case. So given that, that that's the way the NBA works... You don't want to see this team? Like, I get what you're saying. You already know what the finals are going to be. But don't you want to see uh, something that you may never have seen before? You may never see again? Apologize for interjecting. I want to explain that. When the Lakers and the Boston Celtics were dominating the NBA, you knew the Lakers were in the West. Houston would interrupt it occasionally or whatever, but you knew L.A. What you had in the East, however, you had Jordan, but you had Isaiah and the Pistons. You had Bird and McHale before that. Philly had, would kind of get in there Philly sometimes. Philly got in the yep. mix. You see what I'm saying? And then even when Jordan and them were winning championships, the Knicks with Ewing and Oakley and those boys, because of the rough house, I'm saying, because of the rough house stat- tactics Glad and what the NBA up. allowed, you thought they had a chance, and then Jordan just ruined you. You thought Indiana, uh, you had a chance. I'm sorry, Cleveland at the time, Larry Nance, Mark Price, uh, Brad Doherty, Greg Elon. I'm just saying, you saw all of this. What I'm saying saying to you is that you use the word wild card. One existed. You know why? Because at least in one conference, there was some degree of suspense. So when we looked at Kevin Durant, we said, okay, what if he goes to the Knicks? What if he goes to Miami? Then he could possibly be going up against LeBron, and that would at least make one conference intriguing. The fact of the matter is right now you have a problem because both conferences appear to have a foregone conclusion That's because of the move. And, and villainous, understand, understand what the, the definition of villain in sports is. It's when you have a potpourri of individuals who are veered against you because of the decisions that you have made. That's all it is. It doesn't mean that Kevin Durant Durant is a despicable person or anything like that. It just means that people are upset because they're like, damn, you messed up. I mean, you went to the team that beat you, and now you just completely disrupted the power structure. There's no suspense. That's all we're saying here. That's all. During Jordan's run with the Bulls, Any kind of sense that there could have been a wild card out of the East was a complete illusion. You just said it, Stephen A. Smith. 
I'm surprised at you. You just said the names Mark Price and Brad Doherty like they had a chance against Michael no, Jordan, no, Scotty Pippen, Horace Grant, wait a minute. and then later Dennis Rodman and Tony Let me tell you Kukoc. why you're wrong. Let me tell you why no you're wrong. Shot. Let me tell you why you're wrong. You're lying, and I'm going to tell you how you're lying. Because back at that time, Jordan hadn't won yet. Michael, uh, Scotty Pippen didn't even have his migraine. After the first wait, wait, one. He didn't, even have, the first one. he didn't even have his migraine headache yet. So when when Greg, when Brad Doherty and Mark Price and all, yes, you Cleveland, said it again. Cleveland was perceived as having a chance. After they won the title, the right. Knicks, they were perceived right. as having a chance. No, no, no. That is not, no, no. I'm not talking about the first. I'm not talking about. After the Bulls won the first time, the title. It, the title. Oh, no, 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 no. You talking about it after that? It was a wrap. I'm saying yes, the Warriors already sure, won one. Sure. Cleveland. The They're, Warriors and Cleveland can, have been trading titles the last I, two years. I can tell you right now. No, no wild card existed back then. I can, tell you, right back then, I can really? tell you right now. Even after Jordan won the title, after he won three. Everyone felt, or two rather, a lot of people felt like, yo, because of the roughhouse tactics that was still allowed with Mason and Oakley yeah. and Ewing you know and Harper you know and Starks and the crew, the Knicks had a chance. Because you and me are Knicks fans, and we drank the Kool-Aid. But there were people we had no shot. I think you're so them. sad about the NBA. It's like huh? a kid who found out Santa it's, it's, isn't real. I, I, Last year you were so, so fired yeah, let me up. Just say this. No, we have to go to break. Okay. Go, go. All right. All right. All right. Okay. Sorry, guys. Go ahead. We'll do it. Okay. Number one, go ahead. Here's the thing. If you know the preconceived, like it's already going to be the finals, Cleveland versus Golden State. Mm -hmm. In that case, which I agree is the case, that it's sometimes the case in NBA, at least make those two teams as amazing as possible we go. so we get Close. the super fight in the finals. Close to storyline in all of the NBA. Russell Westbrook, what is he going to do, especially when he goes against Golden State? That's it. Speaking of fighting, this is uh, Max's day job. Over the weekend, he was in Oakland. Another day in the office for Andre Ward, who remains undefeated Saturday night. Max will tell us who he should fight next. We'll see if Stephen A agrees. That's when we come back. Stay here.